Welcome to the Silver and Black Show. In this week's overview, brought to you by Hawaiian Airlines, Jim and I get you ready for a week two matchup against the Kansas City Chiefs. I sit down with the Raiders' new receiving threat, Tyrell Williams, and head coach John Gruden joins Chris Townsend to break down some film. All that and more on the Silver and Black Show, starting right now. I don't think people really know how much I love this place. Uh, you know, when I woke up this morning, came into the stadium, and I saw that gold patch, you know, uh, that gold C on, on the Raider jersey, saw my name on it. Had already knew this is the last time we'll play the Broncos in the state Monday night. Like, I had a tear in my eye. This means so much to me. You know, Kenny Stabler, Tim Brown, Charles Woodson, you know, you go, the list go, goes on and on. Freddie B. I mean, you talk about everybody. And to think that we get to be a part of the team that's the last team that gets to play here, like, that's pretty special. An emotional week one in Oakland, and it's not going to get any easier week two. Welcome to the Silver and Black Show. I'm your host, Nicole Zalumis, alongside our two-time Super Bowl champion, Jim Plunkett. Jim, you look at that game against the Broncos, and the feeling isn't lost on the players, on the fans, anyone that's involved in the Raiders organization, that these are the last few games we're going to see here in Oakland. Oh, that's true, and they put on a spectacular show on Monday night. Uh, great defense, put a lot of pressure on Flacco. Uh, offensively, uh, Derek... Carr was at his best, I thought, and uh, great protection, no sacks, uh, a good solid running game, not great, but enough to uh, keep them off balance. And all in all, you know, it was a good start to, to hope, we all hope, is going to be a great season. Well, both the Raiders and the Kansas City Chiefs are coming off of big wins, but they didn't make it through week one unscathed. You look at the signal caller for the Kansas City Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes. Here's a quarterback that is known for his mobility, and he was favoring that left ankle. Great stats overall, but first half stats that were way different than the second half. Uh, no question about it. In the first half, he had like seven passes over 15 yards and some much longer than that. In the second half, none over 15 yards. And, you know, that slowed him down. There's no question about it. A guy who's as agile and get out of trouble as well as Mahomes can, uh, it, you know, it, it put a little damper on his mobility, obviously. Uh, but he's got a week to try and get that healed and ready to go for uh, for this game coming up with the Raiders. But, you know, you never know what's going to happen. On one hand, it, it might heal completely. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, he still might be uh, slowed down by it. But uh, whatever the case, you're going to have to – face a guy who's very good at the quarterback position. I know sometimes they say with a sprained ankle, it gets worse before it gets better. So maybe the Raiders will get a little lucky there, but he still has a tremendous arm. He does, and he's surrounded by a lot of great players. Offensively, they protect him well. they got a good, solid running game. Uh, and obviously he's got receivers who can get down the field and come up with big plays for him. And, and sometimes when you, you lose that mobility, you focus more on getting the throwing the ball and not taking off and running. And that, and sometimes, you know, that really helps a quarterback. Well, he's not going to have Tyreek Hill. He went down. Tyreek does avoid surgery. He does avoid the IR. But you know in football, one man goes down, another steps up, and Sammy Watkins had a banner day. He stepped up big. You know, he had uh, nine receptions, I believe, for 168 yards. 198 yards, I take it back. Uh, just a phenomenal game for Sammy Watkins. Kelsey is always a good, solid receiver, although only had three three catches, but for, for big gainers, that's not going to slow him down too much, uh, even without Tyreek Hill. Well, you were probably thinking of the 160-plus yards that Travis Kelsey had against the Raiders last season. Right. When you look at a tight end of his caliber, he's obviously looking to have that same sort of success this season. Oh, I'm sure. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Uh, if uh, Mahomes is healthy enough to get him the ball, uh, he's going to get him the ball. Uh, only three catches last week by Kelsey, but, you know, they were crucial and they were, and a couple of them were for large gainers. So, uh, you know, I, they're not going to come up short with receivers. They're going to be ready to play this game against the Raiders. All right. Well, we have to take a break here, Jim. Coming up in the huddle, Coach Gruden joins Chris Townsend to break down some film. That's a hell of a win for you guys, for all of us. It's a strange week, you know, but you guys show all kind of mental toughness, and I really appreciate you. I'm really proud of you, man. I would not rather spend this with anybody else. I love this team, man. Let's, let's have some fun. Let's keep getting better. Thank you, guys. Coach, a Monday night football victory to start out the season, and your 100th win as a head coach. It was a special night at the Coliseum. Yeah, it was a great night. No doubt the fans were rocking, and uh, really happy for our coaches and our players. They put a lot of effort into that. And I got to be there in the locker room after the game. And to have your players give you the game ball, how did that feel? I felt good, you know what I mean? To, to have a chance to be in this league is a great 
uh, thing. But to, to, to say you got 100 wins as a coach is great, but uh, you, you really owe it to the people that have helped you do it, uh, players, coaches, and to share that moment with the guys that were in that locker room was really special for me. And you told them how much you love them. I mean, everything that this team's been through to get to this point and to win this game, this team means a lot to you. You know, people don't realize, uh, you know, we're building our team. Uh, we, br we brought in a lot of players last year. We brought in a lot of players this year. We're still building our team. And uh, we're proud of the progress that we have made. And it's taken a lot of sacrifices and hard work. We've got a long way to go, but we're making progress. All right, let's go over some of the highlights here. And one of the highlights, we're going to talk about your rookie running back here, Josh Jacobs. And you talk about a little power football here. This guy rushed for tw 23 carries. I mean, for a rookie in his very first game. Yeah, and he made a lot of conversions in short yardage. One of the things we talked to Jacobs about, Chris, and he'll tell you this. I told him Marcus Allen, as good as he was as a back, he was the best short yardage runner I've ever seen. When it's third down and one, you get the yard. And Josh Jacobs, he proved last night or Monday night that not only is he an excellent football player, he's an excellent short yardage back. But look at the surge off the right side, Denzel Good at right guard, 71. Trent Brown at right tackle played outstanding. And the fullback, uh, watch 45 Ingle kick out Von Miller. That's just a heck of a job uh, surging for a critical first down. And I think one of the big things about this game was the way your offensive line played. Not only running the football, protecting the passer, we'll get into that right here, uh, but Derek Carr was clean the entire game. Well, Derek did a great job recognizing a few looks, but um, you're right, uh, right tackle Trent Brown uh, against Von Miller. That's a tough matchup for anybody. Colt Miller on the left side against Chubb. Those are tough one-on-ones, but here's this good solid pass protection. You see Richard, number 30, looking to help out if needed. And Derek's able to stand back there and make some critical down the field throws to help us win a football game. It was a collective effort. And I also want to say that Jordan Devy is playing left guard uh, in place of Richie Incognito. Denzel Goods playing right guard because Gabe Jackson's out. So you got to give the whole group a heck of a lot of credit, including Tom Cable, our line coach. Cable's getting a game ball. And I think about Derek. Derek looked like 2016 all over again, winging it all around the yard, a ton of confidence. It was great to see. Well, you know, Derek's a good player, and I really believe the supporting cast uh, a lot of the times is going to make a lot of um, – you know, impact on how you play. You got to protect the passer in this league and you got to get guys open. And they're both very hard to do, but we've added some players, we've improved our personnel and it's, it's showing, but we got our hands full this week. And Williams grew up a Raider fan. You got him from the Chargers. I mean, this guy trying to prove he is a number one in this league. Well, I think he is. I think he's very capable of being a number one wide out. Here we are third and eight, at the end of the ball game. We call his number one more time with some run action to the right. We throw a quick screen to him. What I like here is the north-south decisiveness of Williams. He's not dancing around looking to make people miss. He knows he's got to get to that stake. And he goes north and south and turns on the Jets and sells out for the team right there at the red line to get the first down and end things. That was a great play by TWA. And how about your tackle? You know, I don't want to get into that guy. <laughs> you know, he's a great athlete. You know, Look at the left guard and the left tackle on this play. Miller leads it. And Devy comes out. Both of them knock Broncos on the ground. And, you know, you're going to win football games with execution and effort. And that's a good, good picture of it right there. By the way, gutsy call, too, at that point in the game. Yeah, uh, no doubt. You know, you don't want to put the ball up and have an incomplete pass and give Denver the ball back with a timeout. But you got to put the ball in your quarterback's hands late in games and go to your best players. That's what we try to do. And then we got to show the clip of you going to the black hole, your 100th <laughs> yeah. win and what these guys mean to you, yeah. Raider Nation. That's one of the reasons I came back to coach, really, because it was the Oakland Raiders. And these are some of my friends that have grown up now into full-time, full-grown Raider fans. So I got to go down there and, and see them and uh, really appreciate uh, their loyalty to us during some really difficult times. Look at that guy right there. Uh, you know, you got to love Raider fans, man. They're the best. They're your buddies. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It's like the connection you have with the fan base is yeah. as good as any. Yeah, it is, man. It's fun to watch these guys. Some of these costumes they have, I'll tell you what. <laughs> it's awesome. But uh, a good start. Uh, obviously, it's a humbling league. We lost a great player in John Abram for the season. It's it's going to be a big, uh, big, big deal for us to fill that void. But um, 
here comes Kansas City. And Kansas City is strong. We're going to go over a couple of hi highlights with Kansas City and Sammy Watkins. This guy, the speed is unbelievable. Yeah, if you're interested in a scouting report on the Chiefs, it's speed. Speed on offense, speed on defense, speed in the kicking game. And when Sammy Watkins catches his pass over the middle, six-yard gain for most teams. I mean, Jacksonville has five white shirts around Sammy Watkins. And when you can take a seven-yard catch for a 70-yard touchdown with explosive north-south decisiveness, it gets your attention. It really gets your attention. Yeah. So we're going to have our hands full with this offensive attack led by Mahomes, Kelsey, uh, obviously Sammy Watkins. They even added LaShawn McCoy. But how about the throw? I mean, he's looking over here at the concession stand. He throws it against his body. I don't know how the hell he does this. Uh, it's going to be a, a great, great, great challenge for us. We're looking forward to it. Do they spread the field as well as anybody? Well, they do. They spread it uh, with five eligible receivers, and they make you defend every blade of grass, I call it. you got to defend these people laterally with all the jet sweeps, and you got to defend them vertically with all the bombs that they can throw. So they really do a great job creating one-on-one -on -one situations for all five eligibles, and that's why personnel is really important. You get a guy like Shady McCoy in a one-on-one -on -one situation, good luck. Uh, we got to do a great job getting people to the ball, trying to recognize some formations, and trying to get after Mahomes where he can't sit back there and read everything we're doing. Well, that's one of the good things about your win on Monday Night Football. Three sacks, getting after the quarterback, Paul Gunther, and his defense did a really good job. He did, and we had two sacks called back, uh, so we really got to Flacco five times, which is a start. I think Benny Mayoa had two sacks. Farrell got his first sack. So it's a start. Uh, unfortunately, there's no time to enjoy that win. You get home at a <laughs> 1 o'clock in the morning on Monday, and you start looking at the Chiefs. Um, not a lot of us have had much sleep this week. Well, I'm going to tell you, us Raider fans, we enjoyed that first win. We're going to enjoy it. But uh, hopefully win number two against the Kansas City Chiefs on, on Sunday at the Coliseum. Coach, let's go get a victory. Yeah, thanks, Townie. Tyrell Williams has had very few opportunities to prove that he's capable of the number one receiver role. This season, he's ready for the challenge. Good. Awesome. And you look great as well, oh, so we're you. good. <laughs> I mean, the star of the show, really. <laughs> it's your fifth season in the NFL, and you go back to week one. Here you are at the Oakland Coliseum, six catches, 105 yards. What did it feel like walking out there and then putting on a show like that? Uh, it was exciting. You know, I was looking forward to it. Uh, had a lot of family at the game, and so it's just, you know, to be out there on Monday night and be able to get a win like that. I mean, it was, it was awesome. We had a lot of fun. I know that you did have family there and that your father went to high school here, and he's like a diehard Raiders fan, so this had to be a little different for you. For sure. Yeah, he's he grew up in Oakland, you know, so I came here a lot in the summer and hung out. You know, his, his parents lived out here, so every summer we would come out here and, and hang out. So being in front of them and, and, like, my cousins and stuff and just having a lot of family in this in this city, it was awesome to be able to do that. And then especially for my dad, just to be able to see his son playing for the, the, the town that he grew up in. So it was fun. Have you guys had that conversation? Is this a dream come true for him? For sure. As soon as I signed, you know, it was uh, just crazy just to be where he was, you know. And, and you know, he always came to Oakland games when he was little and just, it's just crazy. It's hard to hard to put into words. Well, on the flip side, was it weird for you to be in a Chargers jersey when you had a dad that was a huge Raiders fan? Definitely, definitely. <laughs> it was weird for him too. You know, have to switch and be a Chargers fan for those four years. But uh, but now we're on the right side, so it's going to be smooth sailing from here. I want to go through what it was like being an undrafted free agent to like the bona fide top receiver. Your mindset, did you have a chip on your shoulder? Like what has gotten you to this point? Coming undrafted and from a small school, um, I feel like it was an uphill battle and I had to start on special teams and, and work my way up there. And then I was lucky my second year, I mean, it came from injuries. We had a lot of guys get hurt at the Chargers and it kind of propelled me into almost a receiver number one spot then in uh, my second year and just getting that experience. and. And playing with Phillip Rivers was, was really helpful. He helped my career a lot and just helping to understand defenses and how to play. And then from there, I kind of just was able to get better every year. And I had a lot of good guys, a lot of good receivers around me that taught me a lot of things and I was able to steal some of their stuff. So, uh, but I definitely had a chip on my shoulder and, and been waiting for this opportunity too, just to be a, a true number one receiver and, and be able to prove myself from there. So I've been waiting for this opportunity for a while. What is the room like here? When it comes to all the receivers, I feel like you guys all have such different personalities. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I feel like a lot of us are pretty quiet. You know, we don't really have any any huge personalities, but I mean, we all work really hard. I feel like everybody's got a chip on the shoulder, and, and we all make plays. I feel like a lot of guys through 
through uh, training camp and preseason. Everybody was making awesome plays all in games and practice and everything. So we have a talented room, and I feel like uh, the sky's the limit for us as a group. When it comes to Coach Edgar, I mean, he's such a wealth of knowledge in the NFL. He played and then obviously coaching. I think he's at like 27 years of experience yeah. now. What are your conversations like with him? You know, the, the receivers he had when he was playing on his team and then the receivers that he's coached in, in Green Bay. He's coached them, like Devontae Adams, a really good receiver, and I like to watch his stuff and, and learn uh, how he releases and stuff. And he's able to give us all that film of guys that he's coached or played with. And I mean, it's been huge, you know, he's been around the game for so long, so he knows defenses, he knows schemes, so it helps us out just to be able to play relaxed. You mentioned having the opportunity to work with Phillip Rivers, and now you get another great quarterback in Derek Carr. What is your chemistry like with him? Oh, it's been awesome so far. You know, we got a lot of work together through OTAs and, and training camp, and even before that, just on our own. And I feel like it's definitely starting to, to show now, especially when we get into the games and just see that connection. So. I have a lot of confidence in him, he has a lot of confidence in me, and we just trust each other to be able to make the plays that we uh, were able to make in the first game. You've mentioned when it comes to an offense, you think one of the most important things is having that running back, and the Raiders have that, yeah. it, which is such a nice compliment coming from a wide receiver. Uh, why do you think that? Uh, I think since I came in the league, we had a really good back in Melvin Gordon, and just seeing how much that opens up for the pass game, it opens up for everything. Uh, when you can pound the ball like that, it opens up so much more, especially for me. I, with being a deeper threat, you know, to have a play action and a good running back opens up a lot of stuff for me. And then it just tires the defense out, you know, having a running back, especially like Josh ran last game, and just pounding and pounding and pounding. You can see that they get tired, and it just opens up so much more. And it just, it, I feel like it deflates the defense. So, I mean, having a running back is key. On a personal note, you started a foundation, the Tyrell Williams Foundation, and one thing that you're focusing on is the anti-bullying. What is it about that? Did you have a personal experience or you just think it's so important for the youth? Uh, I just think it's really important. I never had a, a super personal experience with it, but uh, I mean, I feel like I've seen a lot of videos and there's been a lot of kids who have committed suicide just from um, saying that they were bullied at school and stuff like that. And I feel like it's just, I mean, it's ridiculous that that's happening. So trying to do something to help, you know, just be around those kids and, and give them a positive outlook and stuff. And I feel like it'll take away from that a little bit as much as we can do. Why did you feel the need to start your own foundation? I know that you're giving back all the time as a member of an NFL team, but what drove you to start your own? Uh, it's just something I always wanted to do. You know, when I was growing up, I feel like my goal was always make it to the NFL and just be able to give back. So uh, it's always a huge goal of mine. And then I have a camp that I do in the summers too, and it was part of that foundation that we did the camp with. So um, it all just kind of formed together. Well, and working with kids, it kind of just lightens everything, right? Definitely. It doesn't feel like work. So much fun, so much fun. I love going home and doing that camp, just seeing the excitement that they have and just being around guys that are in the league, it's, it's fun for them. I want to focus on the division a little bit. I mean, obviously we mentioned you coming up with the Chargers, but you know, being part of the AFC, seeing the competition and whatnot, this division's a tough one. Definitely. Uh, I mean, I feel like this division definitely has the best pass rushers in the whole league. I mean, the, the way that they get to the quarterback and the talent that's in this, just in this division is crazy. So, uh, and I feel like you see the Chiefs and the explosion that they have on offense. I feel like we have the same uh, explosion on offense. Chargers have explosive offense. So the vision is definitely crazy right now. You know, I feel like it's going to be a, a dogfight all the way to the end, but it's definitely a fun one to be a part of. The Raider fans are all across the country, but here in Oakland, it had to be pretty special walking out there. What was that feeling like? Yeah, it was, it was crazy. You know, being in Charger for four years and coming here, uh, it was definitely, you always felt the energy, but then being part of the Raiders on that side, I mean, it was, it was unbelievable being out there, especially on Monday night under the lights, the electricity was ridiculous. Well, you put on a show for all of us, so we have high expectations, but what are your predictions for the season? Uh, I'm excited. I mean, I feel like we, the sky's the limit. I feel like we're gonna be a really good team finishing out and you know playoffs is always the goal championships always the goal so I mean that's our mindset right now pressure from Oakland they're gonna get home let's, let's go let's go hey that's what I'm talking about hey keep up I told you you stop the run you stop the run the pass pressure don't come They're down in four, four down situation. Flacco's gonna throw on third, can't find anybody. Still standing there, now he's gonna be sacked. He gotta throw that away. That was a third down, he's sacked at the 21 by Clee Furl. His first sack in the NFL.
Welcome back to the Silver and Black Show. What a tremendous game for the Raiders defense as they shut down the Denver Broncos, but it came with a big loss, Jonathan Abram and his injury. And as you always say, next man up, somebody's going to come in filling for him, and I'm sure we'll do a good job. A little younger guy probably is going to have to take his place. But uh, nonetheless, as you mentioned, the defense did a great job. Three sacks, put a lot of pressure on Flacco. Uh, and I thought it was a, a great overall performance by that defense. So it's obviously a tremendous hit for the secondary, but the defensive line was spectacular. They, they did. They shut down the running game for the most part, put a lot of pressure on, on Joe Flacco, uh, came up with some sacks, uh, three in all, uh, and, and continuous pressure. Uh, phenomenal job by that defensive line. A lot of guys don't even know who their names are yet, uh, some of the fans, but uh, they're, making a, they're making their mark. Well, if any a week to take down Patrick Mahomes, I would think it's going to be this one. Uh, hopefully so. You're, they're going to have to. They're going to have to do something to get to put pressure on Mahomes. He is a little banged up with that ankle injury, and, and hopefully I, I want him to get well, but not necessarily this week. All right, Jim, that's going to do it for this edition of the Silver and Black Show. Make sure you join us next week as the Raiders hit the road to take on the Minnesota Vikings. For Jim, Coach Gruden, and all of us here at Silver and Black Productions, I'm Nicole Zalumis. Go Raiders! Hey Raider Nation, if you like that video, please hit the subscribe button below so you don't miss any of our exclusive content, behind the scenes footage and more. Go Raiders.